Welcome back everyone. If you're new here, my name is Brian Jenks and today I am talking about my long-awaited upcoming Obsidian course. So I announced a while ago that I was going to be working on a comprehensive 0 to 99 everything Obsidian course that would cover everything around the application from settings, plugins, technologies that you can use in and with Obsidian, and basically zero to where I'm at doing whatever I'm doing. And many of you express a lot of interest in this. And I actually did begin work on this, but I'm, a f I'm very sad to say I can no longer continue to work on this course, and I'm going to tell you why. But before I do that, a quick note, the best ways to support the channel are if you're going to do it on an ongoing basis, GitHub sponsors because they take no fees, followed by Patreon. If you're going to do like a one-time thing, buy me a coffee, PayPal or just fine. And if you just want to support me without any money involved, the best thing you can do is like, comment, subscribe, share the video, and that's it. So I'm not going to drag this video out because it's not like teaching anything and I'm just going to get you know, to the point and why uh, and explain why. So I take on way too much onto my plate. And as of right now, I'm extremely busy. I am running this YouTube channel. I try to put out at least one video a week. That is still a lot of work. It actually is a lot of work running these channels behind behind the scenes. And even though I'm not really that great of a video editor, in my opinion, um, it's still a lot of work to get all this stuff done. Plus I have to handle dealing with ADHD and getting on task, staying on task, and then handling multiple priorities. My other priorities being uh, I have a day job. I work full-time for the California government, so I'm busy. I have a full-time career job. Um, and then while I was starting to film this course, and while I've, while I've been doing this channel, to be honest, even ignoring the fact that it's been COVID and work from home for like over almost a year now, um, I left a incredibly toxic job, a very, very toxic work environment. Um, I was having panic attacks. I've I probably gained like 20 pounds just from stress eating um, because of I have ADHD. My rejection sensitive dysphoria was just constantly just flaring up all the time, and it was just a nightmare. It was a, I'm a I was a real mess. So I've been handling a lot of that stress behind the scenes, and then thankfully and mercifully, I did get a new job. I actually promoted and got a new job. And that was my uh, second choice of the positions I applied for. And I was really, really happy with what I was doing there. And I actually just got another offer for my, my first choice that I applied for. So I will be going to that place. And basically, I'm going to be learning a new job. Yeah, it's on my work time, but I also have to handle the cognitive load of learning an entirely new job, new agency, new everything. So that's a lot to take on. On top of those things, I'm also a full-time student at Western Governors University, so I have a full course load. So I'm actually taking full-time classes and, you know, I still managed to juggle everything in my first term and I finished about 27 units and I talked about that in my video about it. And, you know, yeah, it was great. I was able to get so much done, but at the same time, I take too much on and I burn myself out. And that's probably something that's related to ADHD of wanting to just do everything and not being able to really effectively balance and manage your time. But, you know, I still manage to do something, but I'm a full-time student as well. So I have a full-time job, full-time student. I'm doing this YouTube channel. I have a second business. And I also just, I don't have any time for my own personal research, really. Like, I have a lot of notes in Obsidian, I have a lot of books I want to read, articles I want to catch up on, but I'm honestly just too busy doing all of these different things for maintenance that I don't even have any time to do any of my own personal research for growth and discovery. And that's something that I actually want to prioritize. And finally, um, it's honestly just a lot of stress to film that much content for something like a course, even though it doesn't have to be as polished in the editing as a normal YouTube video would have to be, it's still a lot to actually get through and film. And it was a lot of effort and that's that by itself is fine. But something that you have to keep in mind is that I'm making video and informative content around Obsidian, which is a brand new and 
constantly developing app, as you are well aware of. It's constantly changing, growing, improving, and it changes, which means I would have to film everything. And then if something changes, I need to go update that content. And that's a lot of work because things change all the time and quickly become outdated. And that's just the nature of tech in general. But this application isn't even out of beta yet. So it's it's very volatile, which means it would be a lot of additional work on top of all the aforementioned things. So that, and then I believe that my approach was wrong. I talked to um, one of my subscribers who's also in my Discord server, and um, we were on a call and he was telling me that I also kind of have been approaching this wrong. Like I was trying to make something that was, hey, here's all the technical, you know, nitty gritty bits and pieces of how to do all this stuff when um, maybe most of what people care about is not exactly how everything works from the perspective of, I want to know how this works to then do something. They want people to say, hey, here's how to do something in this way and might not want to get caught up in the details. Whereas I am the type of person who gets really in the weeds and details and I want to know all how all the gears fit together and then how I can change those things to then have some sort of outcome the way I want it to be. And that means that I was basically a third of the way through doing something in a completely different direction than what I should have done. And basically my approach was just all wrong. So I just decided to scrap the entire thing. That's it. I'm, I'm not going to be doing that course. But even though I'm not going to be doing that course, that doesn't mean I'm not going to do something else. Because something I realized is that maybe doing a lot of pre-filmed video content that is not evergreen, that will become stale and need ch updating and change over time, might not be the best approach for me and for someone like me in my current situation. And I think personally, from my own experience, what I really thrive on doing and that won't become too much and for me and impact my mental health as it has, is doing a little bit more live stuff, especially when I have the time to do it. So I'm gonna tell you a little bit more about that. But before I do, a quick note, if you are interested in the types of things I will be offering in the future, and just to be kept up to date on all the things that I am doing, the best places to do that are my newsletter and my Discord server. Links to those are in the description and pinned comment below. And those are the best ways to contact me. So like I said, I think I perform better and do better when I'm just doing live content. Things like workshops and guided tours or just offering assistance and basically teaching like I am now, but doing it live and live can be recorded. That could also be useful. And I've had some ideas about the types of things with that sort of presentation style that I can do. And here's what I've come up with. So I have in my discord certain private channels for um, Patreon spon uh, patrons and GitHub sponsors. And I'm really loving the idea of just in a way, paywalling some certain things. So having it so only supporters and regular contributors, as well as people who may perchance buy something that I might offer for a one-time you know, amount, which is very likely because I personally am also not a, very, a fan of many subscription services, not all, but some. So there will be multiple options. And uh, the ideas of some of the things I want to offer would be exclusive Q&A sessions where it's just, you know, a small group of people and me, and you can ask whatever you want. It doesn't even have to be about me. I mean, it could be about Obsidian, it could be whatever. Um, workshops where we actually have a target subject of, we're gonna look at actually how to do mermaid charts in Obsidian for an actual useful and practical purpose and all, we, all the things we need to know about that as like an idea. And so live guided workshops, helping you do things like that in your own knowledge systems um, I have the idea for if I, when I get more time, um, doing like a members only book club where we can actually review books on an ongoing basis and, you know, share our notes on those books and yeah, a book club. Um, I also wanted to offer like guided help. So if you have an issue, like, um, a funny joke that I've seen in some uh, other, I've talked about with other YouTubers is when you post in our comments about you having issues with something, um, Usually, if it's something that's simple, I'll just answer it. But many of us YouTubers who deal with things in the tech space, if you're going to ask us questions like, how do I fix this? It's broken. It's, I'm not your tech support. Yeah, you're watching a video. I may be teaching something, but just because something goes wrong for you doesn't also mean that I'm your on-call tech support, um, to put it plainly. But that doesn't mean I don't like helping. So what I 
thought about doing it also as well is people who are like regular contributors, patrons, GitHub sponsors, like you are funding my ability to do more things like this. All that money really goes back into the channel. Like I'm saving for a camera right now for um, a better camera instead of this little webcam. So those types of contributors fund the ability to do this. So offering help to those people is something that is definitely, you know, incentivized. Like I would be, I would definitely drop and help you with something if you were one of those types of people. And then finally, something I've been working on lately, and actually, as with most really good software products, it seems, uh, something I started working on for myself that is actually potentially useful is a business toolkit to use with Obsidian. Basically, how can we use Obsidian in a business context? Because not everything is a plain text file in a business environment. In fact, many things, most things are not. And so I work in public sector government, which means we use a lot of Microsoft Office. I actually started programming by learning VBA, which means I can automate a lot of things in Microsoft Office applications. And certain things collided and came to a head, and I've developed certain uh, programs to actually make the extraction of uh, items in Outlook, like meeting, invite, contact info, people who are on the attendees list, notes, uh, the actual emails themselves, everything, how to extract these things easily into plain text and just deposit them, timestamp, linked, and already organized and structured into your vault directly with a single button click. No right click, save as, drag, drop, none of that. Just, hey, click a button and it's saved in there and already done and ready to go. So those are some of the things that I've been working on and thinking about. And that business toolkit is something I actually want to put out and launch relatively quickly. It's not going to be like a, a large video course. It's going to be some software files, maybe a little introductory video, how to install it, how to use it. And that's something I'm trying to push out relatively soon. And I will likely ask for some beta testers to help me test these things, as well as offer feedback on, because not all business situations look the same. Mine looks like public sector government. Yours is probably something else. So there will might likely be multiple versions or ideas about what we can do for business context obsidian usage. Uh, so that is some ideas that I've been bouncing around my head. Do let me know what you think about those in the comments below. I would love to hear your thoughts on what you think would be valuable and what could be offered for this, because I don't think that my mental health and my way of working with my brain can really take on traditional uh, courses and the way that they're typically done. So that's all I really have for you today. Uh, I'm sorry if you're upset by this news. Um, it's just, I honestly, I just can't handle it. So that's all there is to it, really. If you are interested in hearing more, do sign up in my newsletter. Do join my Discord server. Those are the best places to contact me or to just be involved with what I'm working on and what I'm doing. And yeah, and a quick note before we go, thank you to the Patreon sponsors and the GitHub sponsors who support this channel, Leonardo, Justin, Sarah, Ed, Elliot, Klaus, Pippa, Rito, Rex, Alberto, Angel, Clark, Joel, John, John, Paul, Jimmy, and Rob. Thank you all for your continued support in, well, in my efforts to do this YouTube channel. I appreciate everyone who decides to support what I'm doing. I really love doing this. I don't want to give it up, even though I would really would like some spare time back to do my own research, but I just, I love doing this so much, and I love hearing from everyone who interacts with my videos, loves my videos, and wants to talk and share about these things. So thank you for supporting my ability to do so. And I will catch you all in the next one.